We're De Paul's discussing a philosophy, everybody. Welcome to the show. You might as well practice this because it's interesting. Oh, my God. Have you started while well, I'm still cleaning up the nursery? For years, we have been, you know, founding Paradise, who is our agency, who we love, by the way. And they are great. And they're doing fantastic. And we couldn't be more pleased at this moment with them. But... They have quite a roster and we're always going to, man, why didn't we get, you know, the association come, the association come and they go, man, we just played here. We just played there. Hey, we just got done with three shows in the villages and we're going, man, what's going on? So, you know, that was the thing that. Oh, we were- God. OK, so Jules, why is everybody getting this? Yeah. And Jules, he's, you know, he says, yeah, we're playing here and there. And I think that it has something to do with the ages of all of us and that that we're going to be around 10 years longer than anybody else. You yes. know, I mean, that's so just the way play it's all the things. So I think they go, well, look, let's just see where we can get these other bands and the castles. Well, you know, we'll get them. Their, their time's coming. <laughs> I, I, I. But uh, coming. Anyway. that's hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. But it was a thought I had trying to give justification but you know then i see we're doing the 27th and 28th look at this is honeywell this is their corporate party the first show is honeywell their corporate party so that's a court you know we know what those are we wanted to play those 10 years ago and i believe it's been going on for 10 years and i believe gary's been there and the association have been there and the bucks have been there and we haven't now we're going to go there and they're going to go wow where have you guys been oh you know if we'd have gotten it 10 years ago we might be on it we might have been doing this for 10 years. <laughs> it's so, I mean, if you look at the numbers and how things go for us, it's that's the honey how it would well, go. This July guy thing. Yeah, what Paul's July. talking about is we have a summer gig on the second Happy Together Tour break um, out on this island off Washington State. We're going to play at the Honeywell Estate one night, and the next night, it's a sort it's of a, a benefit concert. A benefit concert. And it's full band, right? On Friday yes. Island, Friday Island or something like that. And a Friday Harbor. Friday, Friday Harbor, Harbor, Washington. A full band. Uh yep. and it's just, and it's good it's gonna be kind of wild. And and so this is a corporate gig. Now, ten years ago, like Paul said, we're going, Well, how come we're not doing corporate gigs? It's like we always come late. Because we're at the end of the very line we've ever seemed to bump into. Oh, I think man. you're on to something, brothers. Yeah. And then, but people hear about our show. I, I think part of it is our live show is getting some reputation. So, and what do we hear all the time, Paul? So we'll get to the Honeywell estate. And the Honeywell people are going to sit us down and say, you know, we've asked everybody, who should we have? <laughs> who should we have? And they all <laughs> say the castles. Mike Huckabee <laughs> said it. Everyone says they all said the castles. And I guess, well, I guess we got to last long enough <laughs> for these people to go. Yes. Yes. Okay, send us the castles. <laughs> yes. I did want to mention another thing to the to the gang out here with us. Um the other thing that, the, and this is like, you know, we don't usually talk about this kind of stuff, but, but we're going to. But what Uh-oh. this is this weekend that we're talking about is we're talking about the Honeywell Estate. OK, so that means the Honeywell Estate is on this island. And so they're having their corporate gig at their estate. And that's incredible. And then we're doing a benefit concert the next day. I'll lose my track here, Susan. Uh, and next day we do a benefit. So for the cow sills, when we're hearing that. We're realizing that there is no pressure on us to sell tickets. Yes. Right. These are embedded audiences, you guys. And boy, I'll tell you, it's very stressful. Uh, it sounds like Jim Yester, but this isn't about the merch. It's very stressful to us to know we have a gig in three months. And, and I'll start looking at how we're doing on tickets, you know, and yeah. it's like, you know, yeah, it's very stressful. Yeah. Yeah. And this isn't going to be that for us. This Can is going to be something. Yes. Honeywell. What are they? Who, they're famous. Thermostats. Is that the heating and air. Heating Honeywell and air. Ham? Oh. No. Heating and air. Thermostats. The Honeywell oh. thermostat that we all had when we were kids. Oh. And, and onward. No like on yeah. Price is Right. A new Honeywell heater. How much is yeah, it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's honey baked ham. <laughs> what do you have for Christmas? Well, Susan gets a Honeywell ham. I know that. <laughs> that must be a, a ham well done. Whatever you. Whatever, bro. Hey, so, yeah. hey, everybody. So the deal is, you know, the 70s. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the podcast. We have no guests. Yeah. 
<laughs> hey, so listen, I'm wandering around the internet, okay? And I find a couple of these videos, one from Finland and one from another guy who are postulating about what happened in the Beach Boys and what happened with Scott Cotton and John Kosu. And the one guy thought they've radically changed their thing forever. They're all, it, it was fun. A couple of videos where it was really big news. And it's like, oh, these, this is big news in Beach Boy land, you know, and everyone still doesn't know. So, what are they saying about it? Well, the, the one guy's still perplexed, but he just doesn't see. He, he did watch a video of the new drummer, and he just he thinks Scott and John, they were the power of the band in the Beach Boys and that they're going to lose that power. And he's even wondered if he wants to see them again because, you know, this is the touring band. This this happened so suddenly. And and he said the timing does not make sense, and the other guy says the same thing. This timing, why is this happening? Why is this happening? The other guy brought in Stamos and said, well, I heard Stamos, Stamos had something to do with the new drama, but I'm not touching that. He goes, I'm not touching that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and I'm going, touch it, touch it. <laughs> it's all about it's what we're waiting for. <laughs> like, oh, my God. That yeah. was, hey, that was, that was kind of fun. That was fun. I have a question, so, y'all, or it's something. Isn't it about time for a Where's John? <laughs> oh, I thought we could get him back on. Well, of course, because yeah. he's been a lot of places, right, man. John, it's been a month. <laughs> he has quite a story to tell. <laughs> he's been yeah. everywhere, son. He and the and, smithereens and the freaking dream syndicate. Hey guys, he check it out. Yeah, yep. And we're the only ones that could get him to tell right. that story. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. I'll call. I'll text. Because knowing John, if five people get to him before us, they're going to get five different stories. They're going to get spun out of their webs. By this guy, you guys. <laughs> do you think John will sh will share the truth with us? Does somebody want to flush this out? <laughs> well, we'd have to do it like jump on him three uh, three against one, right? Oh, no, we have to here, ask him before we right have here. him on. We can't attack him. What? No, oh. well, you can do it before if you want, but we could get on on air and then go. John, is there anything we can't talk about? You know, we could use it to our advantage. Yeah, okay, do it online so fun. everybody can hear it. Here's what I'll agree to this only if we're, after we're done, we go, John, go watch the podcast before where we talk about we're going to do this to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, anyway, he hey. don't care. He's absolutely he's he's like, laughing I right saw now. Him and, listen, we, when we were in New York, when you all went home after the cutting room, that big fabulous weekend we had, That's by so the way, let's talk about that in a second. But the next morning, Russ and I had breakfast with John and Vic. Which oh, was yeah. super fun. They, they trained up for bust up from Brooklyn. Okay. Super fun. These two fit in this city. Great. And just the way they look. They just yeah. look fabulous. They look <laughs> like city people. But anyway, it was really nice. You need and to I look the part. Yeah. I mean, okay. So let's talk about our trip. It was so fun. And the cutting room was cray cray. We thought we were going to be a bomb for Super Bowl. Listen, I'm. I'm one quick factoid about the cutting room, and then we can back up because at the very end, uh, as I was leaving and closing out with Stephen, he asked that we start doing it twice a year. So we're, I think we should too. I, I agreed with him. I, I said, you know what? We could come in December, you know, put it, you know, how we get to place it around another gig kind of thing. We'll he keep, mentioned yeah, yeah, it to sure. me as well. He must mean it. But yeah, well, yeah, but we did the Bureau Beach. That was nice being in Florida again. You know, that was pretty cool. We got our yeah. award. We got, we got the award. Oh, New oh. England Music Award. Is. <laughs> this is what it looked like, folks. So, it is. You know, we got I don't have mine yet. I haven't unpacked. <laughs> New England Music Hall of Fame, The Castles. You know, T-H-E, B-O-B. -B. I mean, come on, man. Give me a bomb right. there. You know, but anyway, that's okay. I'm not going to complain. Hey, Did John get his? That's a yes. whale of a tail. Oh, he yes, did. and he got it in his scarf, too. Okay, okay, oh, 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 okay. He was on board with us so huge, I really wish he would have been with us because he would have had as much fun as we did because it was a beautiful night. Beautiful night. Yes. And I told him everything that happened, and Johnny was like, damn, I'm, glad. I'm well, sorry I missed it. I think, well, here's what I found out, though. Johnny yeah. Boy had a gig. 
I know. Now, I remember yeah. you said, hey, John, you could come and be here or you could send up as a video. He'll go, oh, it's way too late for me to come. I'll send a video. But he didn't say where he had a gig. And I yeah. think he was doing us a favor. I think if he'd have told us, I have a gig with Vicky, then he's bucking up on our ticket sales. I think he kept it to himself, so our sales kept robust. Oh, we got to get a little, like, radius you know, with They were never people. robust in Vero We got to get a tour radius with <laughs> Peterson uh, Cow Sale Brigade. Like, okay, oh. now, you guys can't be. <laughs> and, you know, they're out there playing, though, Vicky. They John. are, and they're I rocking support it. it. We support it, of course. We root for mm -hmm. it. Um, and you can go on there. With their Here, name. Here's my beet juice. Well, and also, we, I mean, we got to give props to John. I mean, he, and maybe we would have done it the same way, but he was able actually to do a very nice, gracious acceptance of his award. And we didn't do that because we're on stage and we're going, oh, 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 you know, we're all over the idiot. place. <laughs> we want him on and we want him off <laughs> so we can get to the show. And I you know, know. John looked like Grammy award worthy. Yeah. yeah all that like was missing was, you know, John couldn't, our brother John couldn't be at her tonight. So we got him backstage at his show in London, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It had that look to it. But then, yeah. the Vero Beach was awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, the meet and greet was as long as the show, I think, there. That was a yes. really sweet crowd. It was. Ooh. And Bev said that that was the longest. And I can't believe this with Peter Noon, but, but she said yeah. it. And so I can repeat it that this is that we had the longest meet and greet line that they've ever had there. Yeah. And I just want to let people know, and I'm not really too proud or embarrassed to say it. I mean, we, nope. we had more, we had everybody that came to the concert did the meet and greet <laughs> because yeah, it, it was like, that. it was like 250 people. Now, statistically <laughs> you could, you could cut out the small subset that might feel sorry for us, so they're going to go to our meeting. <laughs> Put them aside. It's still the longest. <laughs> it's still the longest because because we love the stories. I mean, oh, yeah. days, people. When we did the concert, me, <laughs> the audience went home and the groups went to the next city. That was the relationship between the audiences and the groups in the old days. Now you didn't see the group yeah, unless you started really the meet and greets. Me. You didn't see your group unless you saw them on TV or you could get to a concert. And none of us could get to concerts, of course. And we didn't buy team no. bags. We found out they were there later because we got there. But anyway. So was, then, yeah, right, how, right. how cool. Oh, man. Right, then so we did we get into Florida. Then where did we go? We went to Providence oh. the next day on Friday. I, and the, the great oh. thing about that, it was early. It was an early lobby call. It was 2, 3 a.m. or whatever it was. But we get to Providence, and the beauty of it was it was a night off right away. So we play Vero Beach, and then we have Friday night off in Connecticut. Very good. Very good. And then, into and then we played Mohegan, and all of our family came. And the rooms, you guys, the best part of all of it was that the rooms were ready. Yes, yes. they were. The rooms were ready. Three hours before they would have yes. been. And then what's that fun about important. the show at Mohegan Sun Good is we've already played the show in Vero Beach. Now we get to play it again. Now we get our second shot at it. And now the third shot's coming in New York. Yeah. And if you're a band, you want to keep playing these shows because every time you play them, it's better. It just is. You know, you're more relaxed. And plus, plus y'all, we had Robbie. So we had to kind of perfect that as we Robbie were going. did a great job. Because that was new, job. right? Yeah. Steve Rob did, Robbie a, great did job. a great job. Robbie it was Shaw. fun to have him. It was fun having him out there. I mean, yeah. you know, he's a little yeah. older now, and Robbie, I know bit. you might be listening, a little bit more mature. A little and, bit. Uh, <laughs> it was fun having him, man. Yeah, it was. Hey, we enjoyed. I kept know. telling him, I'm loving having you out here. Robbie was in our global band. So he's an alumni, guys. He's not just a bench player. So he was in the yeah. global band, and we all know right. about global. Right. And he and John. Their rhythm tracks on Global are just as good as anybody else's anywhere else. I will oh, say heavens, that. Oh, yes. yes. Different yes. apples and oranges. So he was just more apples than and just, oranges. Just the bass player, you know. He, he was uh, the global guy. And, you know, we hope to put the Cocaine Grain band back together to, to get that bass player back back in the band. Oh, wait a minute. That yeah, was the crowd goes that wild. That was Paul. Who was that? He's already in the band. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, we'd have to resurrect Barry, find Dennis Castaneras, and then get it all together. Here, oh, my you know? God, you guys. We oh, got to talk wild. about – uh, so Mohegan was great. We got to get to the cutting room because I have to get to the Eagles. Okay. Man. We can get to the cutting room right now in telling everybody there. that, oh, uh, you know, about a month, I think, before we got everything wrangled for this whole East Coast trip, guys and gals – 
Russ threw out a thing and goes, man, why don't we take the train? Okay. And so you see, take the train come through and you're going, man, we've never taken the train anywhere. So, you know, it's just hard to Heck look at that. and go, man, that sounds incredible. Uh, let's do it. It was an unknown for me, but it wasn't an unknown for Russ. And thank God we went with Russ because a lot of times Russ comes up with stuff and we just kind of don't go with it. But this was one of these times where I was looking at it and I second guessed myself and went, man, no, this could be fun. We never have to leave the earth, you know, and, and, and that's and this always is a, Sunday morning. A this is Sunday morning, Super Bowl Sunday. We're trying to get going to take this train from Connecticut to New York. Day of show, day of show, which is always, you know, an interesting aspect. Man, the train was incredible. Everybody got to go to the food cart who wanted to. And they all came back with looking like they're in the game with their box of <laughs> box card board box of stuff and uh and it was really good and, and we it, thought we were in the uh quiet they actually have a a a, a, a train a part of the train of that has a, it's a quiet the part quiet of the train car. and we thought a quiet car and we thought we were in it so we were whispering and then we found out we weren't in it and so then we stopped whispering and carried and on the really fun part too was that like i don't know some of us are kind of wired for anxiety at an airport just being there seeing the word airport palm sweat breath goes mouth goes dry it's just no fun for like however long that time is and then you get where you're going and you're like you've been in fight or flight for seven hours so you're like this yeah. and yes. you get to the gig, right? Yes. So you get to the yes. gig and you're trying to be groovy. Well, man, we walked into our gig like freaking Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. And, we and were right. loosey goosey. We were relaxed. What? Yeah. Make a good point. Unlike the airport. Now the train station had a quiet, peaceful vibe anyway. So, so that was good. You don't have that freneticism at the airport. Until Union Station. <laughs> but what? You have to admit, yeah. what? There was an elevator. We went up it. And we yeah. were on the flipping street. No, but well, here, no, it wasn't like that, Bob. Take, no, take us and well, take us and our people, Bob. Take huh. us and our people through getting off of the train and how we what we did. Well, first of all, just let me finish getting on the train. There's no TSA. Okay. No one's shaking me down. No one's yelling at me if I accidentally had some freaking shampoo and a bigger bottle than I should have had in my luggage. None of that's going on on the train. <laughs> We go down, but they sent us to our, it seemed like a private car. We dragged our luggage up, but put it in this little compartment, took what you wanted with you to your seat. And then we get, and then a beautiful ride. Yeah, there were like four or five stops, but you didn't care. You know, it's like, I'm not stopping the car. Yeah. And it, it nice. was kind of a retro experience, a retro this to it. Anyway, but we get to the modern, uh, the modern <laughs> station we're being dropped off into. I'm unfamiliar with it. it's not I'm Union just, Station. It's Union Station, but we have a new dedicated facility for these trains coming in, and it sparkles more than I expected. So it wasn't dingy like Grand Central Station. And yeah, the red coat guy picks us up. We're we are three flights escalators down in, in the bowels of the the city, and he, this guy guided us right to cabs. We're eating pizza at the cutting room in no time. Steve is telling us, relax. I know it's Super Bowl Sunday, but you're doing okay here. And we did great. We packed the place. And it was just a fun night. And then uh, we got it to go. It was a fun night. We had star-studded. We had and our then, famous friends that came out. Well, famous friends. And then and people who are famous that aren't our friends. Well, but May like Pang, our band, like Paul Schaefer Pang, and his wife. Paul Schaefer. May Pang. May Pang's our pal. Yeah. Eddie Brigatti, we got to meet from the Rascals. Now we're done. We're Eddie Brigatti. All the Rascals we've met. And then, so then. There were a lot, that, of, a lot of musicians there. We have a 2.45 a.m. lobby call after the cutting room show. <laughs> it's just. You do. No, right. You went out. <laughs> yeah, you had breakfast with John and Vicky. That's right. Hey, but me and Paul, we're happy. And Brendan and Robin. Russ and I went out and walked around the camp. Yeah. But the next thing I'm getting. So, go ahead, Paul. Oh, I just wanted to know, Bob. So, because I was on Delta, you were on Southwest. So you got to Southwest pretty quiet, I would imagine, till about four. Oh no, yeah, we had to wait, but but by that time we're first in line. By the time it opened at four, the people behind us, yeah, you know, and Robbie's <laughs> kind of new to this, you know, he's like, "Why are we here? There's no one here." But uh, <laughs> everyone's coming, Robbie. you know, and and sure enough, we are in the front and. From that point forward, we're 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 gone. So it was yes. worth waiting. You're right. Was it open when you got to Delta? Was it open? It was uh, no. I had to wait a little bit. But to yeah. your point, I was in front of the line, and by the time they all came out, there was a 
you know, a Disneyland thing going all the way back. It was packed. And this is the, <laughs> it's the Monday after Super Bowl Sunday. And that's why we were up early and, and handling it that way. Now, the next thing that happens is I, I get a text from Susan and I'm hearing Steely Dan uh, sing. Yeah. Uh, I forgot what song it was, but I'm hearing Steely Dan live. Now, for you folks who are Steely Dan fans, in the day they were famous and you bought their records, no one's going to ever, ever, ever call you from a Steely Dan concert, and, and you're not going to hear Steely Dan live because they didn't, they didn't do concerts. They didn't tour. It was their thing. They were a studio yep. band, a good yep. one. So yep. that was cool. Yes, I figured Hey, and they were great. The and guy had th three chicks. Oh, go ahead, Polly. No, I was just going to say, and let's not remember that uh, the two main cats were the band for Jay and the Americans. Oh, that's right. That's right. I Back forgot that while I was the there, guy. damn it. Yeah. But I got to tell you guys, <clears throat> the dude man, the main guy, the main guy singer, high harmonies. In fact, everybody that night singing their asses off high. Um, but the guy um, from Dire Straits, he was amazing, but he had what they have are these three women called the Danettes. Uh, Steely Dan, Danettes, um, and the three of them, man, they handle it. The Asia, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, and they nailed these harmonies. What's it is? Nice. Did they do cool. the Eagles, you guys? Look, I'm gonna say this because I know a few things. Susan saw the Eagles. Uh, Steely Dan opened for the Eagles. Yes, and uh, our dear, our dear acquaintance because we all know each other whether we've seen each other once or twice in this this world right. so timothy and i have seen each other three times but we're friends that's just how it is guys trust us on this so i reach out can i get a ticket yes you can boom russ and i are at the eagles concert just because we met you you know how's your brothers oh my goodness that kind of thing couldn't say hi because of covid still now these guys okay so it's guitar army it's like, oh, the, yeah. it reminded me of the Highwaymen or the Wolverines, all lined up, mothers, one, two, three, four, five, six or seven, guitars, guitar army, Henley Mann and the drums doing it. They got a, a percussionist, okay? And sometimes he would play and then Don would come out and play guitar, oh, killed it with Desperado. And then Don would play percussion while the guy played, super cool. Um, their harmonies, okay, so they're singing up front, yeah. And, and, and it's so um, organic. And yet on about three songs, maybe four, I'm hearing on the choruses what people probably hear from us, which is a beautiful sound man giving them a little bit of arena magic. So it's them. And you know it because they're you're watching. You, you, you can't fake it. And we've seen people who are singing the tracks. OK. It's yeah. them. They're just, they bump it up on like, uh, like, I don't know, witchy woman, ooh, ooh, you know, so it's yep. really crazy. And then right back into Henley with it's like, yeah, you hear him, you feel him. So. Yeah. Yeah. Point. Excellent. Double in their vocals or something. That kind of sure. Or they can even triple them guys. It's incredible. Yeah. But Susan, how long was the show? Oh, two hours went on and on. The Eagles on were two on. hours. Two hours is not on and on. Oh, no, it was and two Susan, hours of, what? Oh, so, but uh, Steely Dan? Oh, 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 a good 45, 50. He did all, oh. I mean, they didn't do Ricky. Oh. oh, wow. But they did everything else. Deacon well, Blue. they ran out of time. Hey, did oh. they do Go Back, Jack, Do It Again? I love that song. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh. It was, and look, and the Eagles, you know, Witchy Woman, you I, know, the I old want a name when I lose. I oh, drink yeah. Scotch whiskey uh, all, all day, day long. long. Yeah. Means, yeah. The Crimson. And by the you the guys, it was the 80s. Lovely. I told Russ, what about, um, listening to these Steely Dan reminded me of playing around L.A. in the 80s. And yeah. uh, like I won Club 88 Singer of the Year when we were the Secrets. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> well, How was music. production? How was the production? Phenomenal. Up over the top, like Taylor Swift, or uh, no? And what's interesting? More like though, we would so, want. It. So okay, so for Steely, it's just the band, no, no business in the back, but gorgeous lights, of course. You know, okay. Okay. I'm all right with but that. But for Eagles, so Don comes out and tells everybody, no, no fireworks, no this, no that, just a bunch of guys with guitars, which was hilarious because it really is. 
but they have a very nice video situation, i.e. on the big songs up on the screen, it's them on stage superimposed in this wild video. It looks like they're doing a video oh, cool. on one of these nights. It's like, that's not happening on stage. Oh, and then cool. poof, it's gone and it's just them again. <laughs> Got ya. So it's like, no, Don, not quite. That's pretty, pretty big bellsy whistles. It's not James yeah. Taylor, you know, bring in Winnie the Pooh's forest, you know. But right. I mean, it's, it, it was impressive. Yeah. See, the, Eagles, um, the Eagles have a reputation. They said the reason the Eagles, they can't get into the sphere is because they just... The quote unquote stand there. <laughs> yeah. Well, they do. You know and what now, they want and, now, but they want these big produ- every song has do. production in the show. You know, the, with these kids. I have to say, it was it was very interesting. You know, I kind of knew these guys back in the seventies with our familiar acquaintances, all of us, and uh, the, everybody is the exact same guy they were in nineteen seventy five. Like personality, there's Timothy, just the nicest, just, and yeah, and there's Don, very wonderful guy, making jokes about his, you know, okay. he was making any, jokes any about period, how he how he bought period. up Mulholland so nobody could get his view. You know, he even said <laughs> yeah. something like, "Well, if you don't have a guy who's trying to block your view, ha ha ha." <laughs> ah, yeah. Is there any tribute, any tribute to Glenn Fry during the show, a la Carl Wilson, you know? Glenn's son is a new eagle. It's Vince Gill and Glenn's son, and he sings Glenn's stuff beautifully. It was, I'm getting chills saying it, saying it. And uh, Vince, oh, 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 but the, but the, but the whole thing, guys, the, the, the cream of the whole thing. Life's been good to me so far. Joe flipping Walsh on fire, singing his ass off. Clearly him, because he's doing all kinds of wacky phrasing. Joe Walsh killed it and then killed it on fire. He's got this old man hunchback thing going on. He's like old dude in this cowboy green. He's like swimming in his shirt because he's old man guy. But he was, I play to parties. I mean, oh, he made total jokes about being arrested in NOLA. It's good to be back here. I can say I don't really remember the last time, but you have a very nice police department. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, hey, it was did, hilarious. Did they, do, did they do Boys of Summer? Did, did uh, Don do Boys of Summer? Yes. Sound good? Guitaring and all that. Okay. Everything. Everything was on point. That's what Jackson said. Jackson said, be prepared to hear the records. And gosh darn it. I've always been good with that. Yeah. So look, keyboard players, trigger and strings, you know, all alone at the end. That's got that's got big strings in the beginning of Take It to the Limit. Yeah. Boom, you've got them. You could could see everybody working their crap. That's what I liked. They were they were organically using what we can use now to be as real sounding. Give them a little break on a couple of things, but they Don Henley when he came oh, up sucks. with his guitar just slayed it. Okay, slayed it. After the just yeah, yeah. good Desperata and others. Yeah, you know what we need to think about, you guys. That Susan's been saying all this stuff you know um for everybody out there you know we've been trying to put these 70s songs together for the 70s oh. rock and romantic cruise Eagles, but we don't have an eagles one do we i thought no. about it that night no there's a million we could do because it's three part we already know them press like Would john peaceful, Henry- easy feeling be an easy one yes the only job singing like the only, I, I did it for 28 years I did Peace Be Easy Feeling, Desperado, Take It Easy. Uh, anyway, uh, Peace Be Any Easy. Any one of those would be fun, guys. The, the only challenge is the middle set, that long instrumental with the pedal steel and the electric. Down, 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 We can edit, edit that, Bob. We'd have to. Boom, we'd, boom, we can boom, rearrange boom, it boom. there. Yeah, we'd have to do something. Rearrange it. Yeah. Think about it. They're easy songs. This Peace Be Easy Feeling, that's just a vocal Dinner. I know. Yeah. Maybe I we know. could add it, Bob. It, it could be done easily. No. We'll we just give it some to, thought. We have to agree. I thought of it. Trust me. Because we like to clone the recordings. We will, but we would have to agree. And the boxer, that's an outlier. Uh, in, in a way, Heat Wave is going to be an outlier. We're going to wear Heat Wave well. We wear the boxer differently, but well, where we we can change the key, even, you know? It's like that kind of thing. 
I but know what you mean. Easy. But just adjust the middle instrumental. Everything else will sound the same. It'll be good. It sound like the record. We can do that. Oh, oh yeah, we could do that. That'd oh. be fun, man, and it'll be easy. A D G E. That's know, a pad song too. That. That's a strummer pad for keyboard and guitar, like like Cool Stop the Rain strummer cool. song. That's what they are. Love yeah. it. I'm a strummer. Now you're uh, doing Cool Stop the Rain, right, Bob? I I think so. I've been doing it my whole life. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah right. we're just, no, who I'm just saying. Stop the rain. And you yeah. get to, you'll be able to do it in this the right key. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's in G. Original. C. G. Yep. Totally. Yeah. Sorry, cool, I can't cool. do heat wave in the original, guys. No, that's a nice. Can't. No, don't worry about it. I that's what I'm saying. But that's where heat wave is more like the boxer, where we can we it's malleable. We can move that key. We can move that whole thing and make it ours with heat wave. You know, using yeah. Linda Ronstadt's foundation as the template. You know. Yeah. Uh-huh. And with Susan, we did that with Country Road. Um, it, it, we're doing it in G, which John did. He did his record not in G, but on the road, he always did it in G. Isn't that because funny? I can Even speak back in to, the day. I can speak to that because when I did my first solo album, I write low, okay? In the very early days, I wrote lower than I even do now. I just didn't know uh-huh. any better. And then, but it would be okay on the album, but then I'd get out with a band and I, I couldn't get above the band, so I had changed the key. And so every time I play with anybody now, my guys get all these charts. It's like, what is it? Is it the record or is it the live one? Or when you oh, had a God, cold, yeah. there's chart yeah, and she yeah. laryngitis. Well, country country roads yes. transfer is really good to G. Actually, it sounds best it in G. Maybe he even tuned the guitars into the G tuning to do the recording. I don't know. No, yeah, yes. put it in A on the record. Yeah, yeah, or maybe a half step up. Anyway, yeah, that's going to be terrific. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. excellent. We'll, we'll be fine with that. So, we'll Susan, yeah, um, are we ready to move on to uh, me and Bob uh, being not locals from New Orleans? We are wondering what Mardi Gras is. We know it's a crazy party with floats and beads and breasts, but but what is it? Like when you said to us last week, oh no, okay, you guys, you you two can do it? Okay, good, because I have to do Mardi Gras. Okay, that's all you said. So, so like, and then we went away, and was, what does that mean I got to do Mardi Gras? So take us through what, was it okay. that Tuesday evening? Um, that- I don't know. Yeah, that actual first direct answer, I got to do Mardi Gras, that meant it was that Tuesday. However, that's Fat Tuesday, the day of Mardi Gras, but there is two weeks that lead up to Mardi Gras, and I will tell you what it is. It started off as a religious holiday, as most holidays do, and it is about the um, ramp up to Lent. So what we're going to do is, it's good Catholics, we're going to blow it out, like really go over the top much as in Lent is over the top in restraint, the reaction in the front of Lent is to go nuts. Now, how the the part, how the balls and the parades, well, you got to talk to Mobile, Alabama about that because they say they invented it. And then you got to talk to people in Tennessee because sometimes they say they did. Brazil. (laughs) but, But the idea is this. It is faux royalty. So we have a parade. Let's say it is... Um, Toth. So that's after a Greek god. So we have a king and queen of Toth, and then we have a court of co- Toth. And then we, and everybody gets on a, a float that is built throughout the year, much like the Rose Parade or any other kind of parade. You build the float, and oh. there's many in a parade. And so it's a theme based parade. And we have two weeks of a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday before the big week. OK, and that's two parades in, on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, two, four, six, two, four, six. We're looking at about 20 parades when it's all said and done in the two weeks before the big one day. What is the oh. final thing? I would love to clear up the nakedness and Mardi Gras. That was instated by college students in the late 70s, early 80s, coming in for wow. spring break, who would go down onto Marty, uh, down onto Bourbon Street. And back in the day, parades went down Bourbon Street. Didn't oh, They don't anymore. But in the beginning, they went right down that tiny little street. 
And as right. the teens are out there and stuff, and they're that it just yeah, it's like you know, throw me something, Mister, which is what you say when you want to be. You're out there screaming, throw me something, Mister. Turned into oh. show me something, miss it, okay. And so the little teen girls started this thing. Next thing you know, excuse there's videos me, called excuse me. Girls for the Gone audio, Wild. Time for the audio people. This thing oh. Susan's referring to, she keeps lifting her bra up. As oh, I forgot there's the audio. Breasts. They're showing their breasts to get the beads. That's what she's Correct. talking about. Okay, go Correct. ahead. And so that started happening. And you guys will remember in the 80s when all of a sudden we're seeing these videos called Girls Gone Wild. And it's all down yes. on the street with beads and boobs. And the deal is, is if a guy points to you on a and then the parade guys will shoot. Why not? So they're in. Right. Point to yeah. a girl. She'll lift her shirt. You throw her a bead. This just got better. So that was brought in in the 70s and 80s by spring breakers from various uh, yeah. across oh, the country. Geez. Then they make the real good girls gone wild. Now, New Orleans, the, the commerce, the culture, the, 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 the people who protect this place down here are going, how are we going to deal with that? Everybody's coming down here thinking everybody's naked on Bourbon Street. Uh, yeah. Stop having parades on Bourbon Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, because okay, they're all drunk. I mean, people are going to drink when you're out, but you're going to drive yeah. them into them. <laughs> yeah, so really, yeah, yeah. That's even, how that became but even, that. But even without the parade down Bourbon Street, I know I've seen Bourbon Street shoulder to shoulder people and the beads and the breasts. I, I don't well, know. Did they outlaw? So, did they make a law against it now? Or? No, no, no. So now oh. what happens, Bob, instead of a float, People, are, you know, when you go down Bourbon Street, there's the old New Orleans houses with the balconies up top. Yeah, well, now yeah. there's a bunch of dudes up top with beads and a bunch of chicks down below. So, so now they're all coming oh. in to see it. It's like, well, we're, go we're all going to New Orleans because the chicks from Minnesota are coming in to show us their boobs. We're going to throw them beads from the balcony. So it's oh, still yeah. going on down there. But you won't see that on St. Charles on St. Claude. These are, this is a family moment, believe it or right. not. Oh, you. Okay. You, can, you guys <laughs> without family, you guys without family, listen to this information very closely. Susan, go ahead. It's, it, it is. It's a family event. It is a satirical parade. It is satire, politics, religion, mu anything, culture. It's making fun. It's parody. These floats, a lot of them are parody. Um, um, and then some of them are just, you know, so, and you, you, you get dressed in themes, all you and your family, Miranda, Peter and I went as the Flintstones one year. She was bam, bam. It's great. Well, yeah. Does the theme change every year? All of the Rose Parade changes yes. every year. Their theme. The parade Clubs do not, such as Muses, um, Endymion. And the Endymion Parade is one of the biggest ones at the end before Fat Tuesday, like Harry Connick Jr. and Sting. Oh. They're the captains. They get famous captains wow. of Endymion. Uh, yeah. to come in and ride up front wave and, you know, get a million dollars, I suspect. Um, but um, what were we just saying? What did you ask me? <laughs> Pretty excited. No, I was just, uh, but I have another question. After Fat Tuesday, okay, which is the end okay. of all of this. Okay. On Wednesday, is it is it mm -hmm. really as if someone flipped a switch in New Orleans and oh yeah. All the babies are sleeping. It's hilarious. <laughs> okay. You guys. So what it is, you'll remember this from when we're young. You guys remember Ash Wednesday. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. well guess what? Those same people that were out there tearing it up for the two weeks. <laughs> Or walking around former shelves of themselves because it's exhausting. Even if you're not partying, just getting out, get the ladder, drive, park, yay, yeah, yay, yay, run, take the I can kid see them all the just pointing their forehead. From dust I return to dust I return. <laughs> they're all, all they're like all dust. walking around hungover with freaking ashes on their heads. Oh, yeah, too That's funny, that, guys. And then. And then, and, and Johnny Sansone, I'll use him as a pinnacle of our, our community, beautiful harmonica player, blues guy who we'll have on, on when we're doing part of our New Orleans theme. He goes the really far with Lent and gives up like alcohol, uh, sugar, like, and it keeps adding to it every year. So he goes from rocking it, he's from Jersey originally, um, to as pure as the driven snow by 7 a.m. Wednesday, and I see it all over town. It cracks me up. Oh, yeah, it's good stuff. 
That's Very it, guys. That's pretty much it. All right. Well, good. Well, uh, good luck to all of you. Listen, um, next uh, year, next yeah. year, I have a suggestion. Um, we have a Mardi, because we will be home for Mardi Gras. We'll have a Mardi Gras um, podcast. I have a group of 10 people coming in. They stay with me every year. You know a couple of them, Barbie. It's Barbie's Mardi Gras Brigade. These people are insane. They come in and they have costumes. I think they're going to be crying babies. So there will be 10 oh, grown-ups awesome. walking around dressed as babies. <laughs> they were old people last time they were in town. And Russ and I were the uh, doctor and nurse running the home. <laughs> oh, hilarious. man, that's funny. You see, so that's how we theme it up. It's, and so next year, maybe we could even, you know, interview some Mardi Gras people. Who knows? Sky's the limit. We could be on national TV by then. You know what? I wonder if we should try and do episodes on the cruise. We've talked about this before. Like, can't we just do what we're doing here and just bring it home? And why can't well, I just like we did on the, the on tour? Way? Why can't we do it the same way we did it on the tour, but just right, do it on the cruise? We can. We can. We can. Let's we, say we, we're gonna. Yeah, and we have the ability, right? We have the ability as far as technologically out on the cruise. Sure. Well, now that's the thing. Does Zoom Zoom on the briny ocean? We'll find out. I'll find out. Here's what. I bet you guys, because, you know, if you go down to business, you can purchase like people who have to work. Robert used to. Yeah, you thirty can purchase dollars packages a day to make your Wi-Fi right. Yeah. Oh, well, heck, we could do that. Yeah, we yeah. need Wi-Fi. That'd be fun. It would be great. And then we could have also, footage of like Aruba and, you know, like we could be international podcasties. And we could also at any moment just go, hey, come on, we're going to take you out on the deck. For you know, sure. we could we're gonna go do down and see the yard on, birds on tour, yes, or anything like that. Bring it to the, sound it, check. Like, Bring it to sound yeah, check. Or something. Bring it to the yeah. Q and A. We could do yeah. the whole Q and A. We can do we can interviews. Have everybody wave hey. into the podcasties. Yeah. Hey, everybody, right. we're on podcast. You're on. Listen, our podcast. I was going to say we can tell our audience tomorrow when you see us on the boat, come on up because we want to talk to you for the podcast, and we'll get howdies from everybody. It'll be great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. we can right. we'll okay, right. we exciting. can make that a plan. We'll we'll plan it. We'll plan. Okay. It. Yeah. Okay, and you guys are coming in nice light clothing for the for the cruise, right? Uh, I suppose so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have my shirts. Yeah, and, uh, we no, have. Um, we did last time, and it worked out really well. Yeah. yeah, we have two shows on the pool and one show in the lounge. In the well, sky lounge. Okay. So, so is that what they the lounge. Remember that how comfy everybody was. Hold on. Hold on. I didn't look at the change. They sent a change on one of the cruises, and one of us we went in the lounge with one of our shows. Uh, well, yeah, because we now we have we get on the cruise that day is cruising. We play the next day, and then we have a day off. We play the next day, a day off the next day. Which cruise? And before the it was second we were, one, the second yeah, one, and so, yeah. And, and so, and they're at four o'clock. So they'll be from uh, four thirty to five thirty, or three thirty to four thirty. On um, what cruise? Is it the first cruise? Yeah. On the on the rock and romantic cruise. Oh, the seventies. Okay, seventies. Yeah, like that, that's what got changed. Because yeah. at first, all six were on the pool deck, and eleven at night, one of them. And before they changed it, they said it changed. Yeah. And now I'm seeing we're in a lounge. The late night show is in the lounge. As as it's been in the past, so yeah, and it's I cool, mean, man. We got JC. We no, got I no remember. worries. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, the and, last and they time, actually had a young lady doing the sound. Yeah, the I was going to say there was a young lady doing the sound. <laughs> we got latency going here. <laughs> yeah, the young lady doing. She the sound. did a great job. She's yeah. she's able to do a good job. <laughs> Shut up, Susan. The, the last time oh. we were in that lounge, that's what oh. caused. Another show, I think. Remember something? Yes, like yes, yes. Okay, so, all right, we're in the lounge. We're in the and lounge. it turned people away. So that's why they changed it. It's that ticket system or something, I guess. Something, I don't know, yeah. Okay, that's yeah, good We could have easily done three on the pool, but. Oh, hey, man. you guys, huh. when we're done here, will one of you guys remind us not to hang up because I have something I forgot to ask you when we were pre production -y. So try we'll and remember. Stop the recording and stay on the screen. Thank you. Sorry, this has been a public service announcement from Susan Coach. Oh, wow. Sounded like, <laughs> sounded like it was real. So hey. my freaking water's all over my the, desk. The cruises <laughs> are coming right at us, guys. You know about the cruises. Yep. You know about North Tonawanda. May 4th. Now there's May 30th in Stafford, Texas, a trio show. 
then the Happy Together Tour, which now opens in Velocity, not, not Clearwater. Hey, Susan, are you doing your 31st? Wait, wait. Wait, we have a 30th, right? Yeah. May 30th in Stafford, That's Texas. Still, yeah, video I am. Show. And you said... You, I think I'm doing it. And yeah, I've got my... I've got a, you a Dave Jenkins from, moment. You can come from New Orleans to Biloxi Day of Show. Oh, no, no big deal. On June no, 1st. what it'll be is I'll go from here to there with y'all to Arizona to Happy Together. Arizona? That's my commitment. You're, oh, it's not local? Oh, my God. Okay. Well, you have fun. Screwed. But guess what? Uh, Who thought we'd have anything booked before Happy Together? Because we generally don't. <laughs> but what? The whole here we are. Starting Popular. next month, the whole year's booked. Okay. Honestly. You know. I We're know. coming back to Tomball, Texas, October 24th. October 24th, people. We're coming back to Tomball. Yes. This, uh, November 8th. That was a fun gig, Tom Ball. In Vegas, November 8th. And uh, this is coming yeah, up. Yeah, fun. Now. The September fun, gig. Fun. We'll get into those next episodes, but that's okay. Yeah, we don't want to ruin the next episode. So guests who are coming, just so you guys know who we're going after, we're going after Jimmy Balbino, okay? Google Jimmy, great, great musician, great bass player. We're going after Sean Cassidy, right, Susan? Oh. Yes, we are. Uh, buddy Robbie. Easy. Uh, for people who don't know, Robbie was in Sean's uh, band back in the day. That's right. Um, he, may I? Uh, I wish I would have remembered to announce him with those accolades when I did it on stage. Yeah. I, 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 I thought about it later at the airport. Should have okay. done that. Hey, listen, also um, came to my I, uh, a guest I'm going to reach out to, and I have a feeling he's going to say yes because he hit me up a couple years ago. He had discovered the On My Side album and texted me and went, what in the hell? This is the best thing I've heard forever. Mike wow. Mills from R.E.M. So mm -hmm. I'm going to text old Mike. I just was talking with Halsey, and they had just done a show, and Mike sent love. And I said to Peter, you think he'd do it? He said, I think he would. Why don't you just text him like you do? So I'm going to try Mike Mills, but we will get oh, wow, that'd be huge. Thomas here in town. That's my next Johnny Britt with Thomas. Um, we need to get Johnny Britt and little Anthony. Yes, yes, yes. Little These Anthony and John and Britt. Yeah. And we, we got to talk to Sean from the boat suit. I remember we had him lined up. Sean. Once he yeah. yeah. But so he we got a lot coming good. our way. He's yeah. got the good story as well, yeah, story, you know. Yeah. Oh, he's crazy interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Good. Yeah, John like Stevens, a, 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 a soap opera star, a teen heart. So throb. we got lots of guests coming beyond that, uh, even guys. Because oh, I know yeah. this is kind of our third episode without a guest, but we're just trying to get caught up uh, with everybody after the holidays. Yeah, yes, know, we got a lot going on here, and so do other. People. Yeah, we got a lot going on. I got a lot. I'm still There's trying to going pretend on. I'm a stay at home <laughs> I grandma. Got snow. <laughs> All right, so um, that's kind of it. We, we're still uh, – stay tuned for 97.9 yeah. The River. You can download yes. the app now and get ready for our weekly Sunday afternoon radio show, The Cow Silk Chronicles, yes. and it's going to be kind of cool. What? Man, that's going to be awesome. It's based on our podcast, which is uh, – these folks view our podcast as a, a library, a, a historical library of all these in our, in their own words is the unique thing of what we're doing. We're, if it's Bill Medley, he's telling us how they got their name. You know, yep. Tom James is telling us how to name Moni Moni. How'd you get that song title? Stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got a heavy chronicalized our, and our episodes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, people think there's value of that. We agree. And we'll hope to launch from there into radio syndication, little snippets and segments of our podcast. That's, that's the business be model. Um, we're hanging on to our publicist. Yep. Bob, Bob, Merles. Yeah. Bob Merles is going to be yeah. publicizing all of our stuff for you now. Uh, and we've got a lot going on. And this is our 10th. A lot. Ever. You know, it's funny, you guys. Like, we'll tell Rock. Hey, Rock, just recently, Billy Joel, he's out there with Stevie Nicks. Billy Joel's out there with Sting. Billy Joel's at the Grammys. Now, Rock knows Billy Joel. It's like, we need to open for a big tour. We need to open for like a Billy Joel. Take us out for six cities. He didn't need to take Stevie Nicks for six cities. You we don't need, need it. You need a champion. And listen to us. Do you think we have nothing going on? People could sit us down and say, hey, you knuckleheads, you headline a summer tour. You're coming mm -hmm. out your 10th summer in a row. What are you doing? You, you, we all you always feel like pound puppies. We what want Paul? more. <laughs> 
Yeah. Hey, Bob, but to your point on um, uh, Bob Merlis on putting something out about it being our 10th year. Very okay. nice. So he needs to do that. And, you yeah. know, because that'll make sense to rock in them, you know, uh, why he's retained. Right, why we right. have him on a retainer. Let's get some headlines, man. We need to, yeah, right. we need to make our own come stuff. up with some stuff. Having I think the radio way, it's going to be great. <laughs> having our own uh, weekly radio shows a headline. We got headlines. Come on. Come on. Yes. 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 Come right. on. And then we're going to get the Love real. It. And I can see the headline in the Inquirer now. What really happened with the Beach Boys? We'll get Johnny yes. Boyle down. We'll gonna bust tell that story. Tell mm. all. We'll bust that story wide open, man. We got a publicist now. <laughs> wide. No, yeah. no, that's going to be two good. episodes. Yeah, yeah. But speaking of two episodes, Paul, we've talked okay. about this. Okay. So, uh, now, one more subject. Paul is going to take a couple of episodes, and Paul is going to, we've been promising this, and I've been wanting to ask him, but he's going to be in the mood to take us through <laughs> the Bridie Murphy years and project that's oh yeah i, I feel that's I promise like to get that done yeah i promise to get that done sooner rather than later yes and that's hey, what i'm gonna start formulating Paul council's it. perspective i need it i need it it's a great it's a plan. good one anyway i so want to one day tell my story about john meyer and i getting falsely arrested for robbing a photo booth which we didn't and marlon brando walking through the crime scene remember that paulie <laughs> yeah, it was I a wacky that. day i like that <laughs> and it happened and hey, look, it was we'll, we'll share yeah. arrest stories okay I, can, great. I have one i have one i got arrested okay. you know, all right and, everybody and I, can, I can share it it's a good great, one i can share this one yeah. I have an incredible arrest story. Oh, I love it. Arrest stories. This Wait, is how fun. Long have we, I guess we've been going too long, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, we let's not. start now. Let's save it. Let's yeah, yeah. And you know what? It might take a whole episode for me to tell you all about China and the prison. <laughs> okay. I mean, and look, we could do a double feature on me. I could do the Marlon Brando oh, yeah. photo booth arrest and okay. the Maureen McCormick Northridge Mall arrest. We could just have a combo with me. Well, yeah. all right, okay. yeah, guys, we'll have the arrest episode. Mine involves a, a Thanksgiving Eve. I'm in a cell, and across from me is a, is a black guy in a blank, only wearing a blanket around him. And and I'm about to get shipped to Central uh, until something happens. But okay, anyway, that's it. Into everything. Okay, that's that's it. your teaser. We can get into everything. Okay. Teasers are done. Uh -huh. Thank you for visiting us with. Okay, the, my teaser you know, is the girl said, just like Bob, the girl said to me, my teaser is the girl said, girl, if you don't get out of here soon, you ain't going to make it where we're going. <laughs> All right, that's Susan's teaser. Paul, you got and my teaser. And my teaser, I do have a teaser. And the FBI said to me, give me your passport. <laughs> and I was in China. No one wants to hear that sentence. <laughs> Good. Okay, folks, see you for the next, next. Arrest episode of the Council <laughs> Podcast. All right? Nobody's a saint. Nobody is a saint. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs>